Okay, we're going to play a game called The Big Ship. I'll give some instructions and you follow. Okay. The captain's coming. Aye, aye, captain. Scrub the decks. Cook's coming. Climb the ropes. Seagulls overhead. Okay, we're going to start the game. Ready? Captain's coming. Aye, aye, captain. Scrub the decks. Cook's coming. Climb the ropes. Captain's coming. Aye, aye, captain. Captain's coming. Aye, aye, captain. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Cook's coming. Seagulls overhead. Captain's coming. Aye, aye, captain. Climb the ropes. Now we're going to get faster. See, can you catch up? Climb the ropes. Scrub the decks. Captain's coming. Seagulls, Seagulls overhead. Cook's coming. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Captain's coming. Seagulls overhead. Climb the ropes. Scrub the decks. Cook's coming. Captain's coming. Scrub the decks. Scrub the decks. Climb the ropes. Captain's coming. Cook's coming. Seagulls overhead. It's coming. Cook's coming. Captain's coming. Scrub the decks. Sign the ropes. Brilliant. Well done. That's the end of the game. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome again to our club today, Titanic Part 2. Did you enjoy last club, Charlie? Yeah. Very good. Why have you all these suitcases, Charlie? I'm going to America. Wow. Are you going on holiday? Yeah. Very good. I know someone else who went to America. Who was that, Charlie? John Harper. Why did he go to America, Charlie? To tell people about God. Yes, he wants to tell the good news about Jesus. Now we're going to sing our song, No Greater News. On the 14th of April 1912 at 11.40 p.m. the Titanic, the greatest ship in the world at that time, hit an iceberg and the iceberg had ripped holes in the side of this huge ship. People were panicking. The water was flooding in through the decks, through the bottom of the ship and through the five compartments and the people in the lower class, the third class passengers, they began to panic. 
They began to panic to get up onto the deck, to get life jackets on, to try and get into lifeboats because they knew that their life was in danger. And up on the deck, it was the first class passengers who were given places on the lifeboats first. It was the women and children, and these were the rich people. And they were getting onto the lifeboats and the lifeboats weren't full of people, but they were the lifeboats down into the water and they were pushing the lifeboats away from the ship. This ship was so, so big and it was starting to sink and people were panicking. Well, John and Nana, they were up on the deck and because John was a widower, because he was the only living parent of Nana, he too could have got on a lifeboat with Nana. But John didn't even think that he could because all John was concerned about was telling people about Jesus. He knew that this ship was sinking. He knew that many people had no hope. He knew that they were lost and far away from God because of their sin and he needed to tell them about Jesus. And he explained this to Nana who was just six years old. He told her that he needed to stay on the boat. He needed to tell people about Jesus. John knew that Nana would be safe he knew that she belonged to Jesus because at an early age she had asked Jesus to forgive her for all of her sins and she belonged to him. And John knew that one day he would see Nana again in heaven. If he did not see her on this earth, if he did not survive the sinking of this ship, he knew that he would see her in heaven because that was the hope that they had. They had this eternal life that only God can give through Jesus, through the forgiveness of sins. And John knew that Nana would be safe on a lifeboat with John's sister, Jessie. And so he put her on the lifeboat. He said goodbye to her. He prayed with her. He prayed that God would keep her safe. He prayed that God would help him and give him wisdom as he would tell other people the good news about Jesus. And then he said goodbye to Nana. And that was the very last time that Nana would see her father and John then began to preach and he began to tell people about Jesus. He told them the good news that Jesus is looking for them, that they were lost and far away from God because of their sin, but that Jesus loved them, that he was looking for them, that he wanted to forgive them for their sins, for all the wrong things that they had done in their life against God. He told them that Jesus could forgive them. Jesus could give them eternal life. Jesus could give them an abundant life. And John preached and he shouted, women, children and unsaved to the lifeboats. He knew that if people did not trust in Jesus, that they would be lost forever. Some people tried to get onto the lifeboats. Men disguised themselves as women. And some people even tried to buy a seat on a lifeboat they tried to save themselves, but money could not save them. Money could not save them from this sinking ship. Money could not save them from being lost at sea. And money cannot save you from being lost from God. Money cannot save anyone from being far away from God. It doesn't matter how much money people have. It doesn't matter how good people are. It doesn't matter how good you are. You need to have your sins forgiven by Jesus. And the lifeboats were filling up with people and they were being lowered down into the water and John kept preaching. You know, some people listened and some people didn't. Some people were screaming, panicking. They weren't even listening to the good news about Jesus. But other people did. And some people trusted in Jesus to be their saviour. And where they were, on the deck of the boat, they prayed and they asked the Lord Jesus to forgive them for their sins. And they were now saved. On this ship there was a string quartet and they were playing music. They were playing the hymn, Nearer My God to Thee. As people panicked, as people were running around looking for life jackets, trying to get onto boats, John kept on preaching, telling people about Jesus. Well, the bulkhead of the ship began to sink into the water. And the end of the boat went up, up into the air. And people were falling off the decks and into the icy cold water below. Nana watched all of this from her lifeboat. She could see the ship was sinking. And I'm sure she sat on that lifeboat. She was praying, praying.
praying that God would help her father, praying for the people who were on that boat, who were in the water, who were trying to swim, people who were trying to survive, people who would very soon be lost at sea. She knew that God was with her father. She knew that God would help him. She knew that God was in control. People were falling off the ship down into the icy water below. It was about minus two degrees and people would only be able to survive for about 30 minutes in the icy cold water. They had no life jackets. There wasn't enough lifeboats. People were lost out into sea. They were lost into the ocean. John knew that the ship was sinking and he jumped into the water and he swam around the water telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. He led people to Jesus. He took the time to tell them about how amazing Jesus was, about what Jesus had done for them when he died on the cross, when he was punished for their sins and people trusted in Jesus. They prayed, they asked the Lord Jesus to forgive them for their sins and they were now saved. They were now rescued from the danger of sin, rescued from the punishment of sin. Are you ready to go on your trip, Charlie? No. Oh, what's wrong? I lost my teddy tiddles. Have you looked everywhere, have you? Yeah. I will help you to look for them as well. Hmm. 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 Oh, here he is, Charlie. I find him. Is this him? Yeah, and Stiddles. Thank you, Stephen. That reminds us of our next song that we're going to sing. Everything changes when we're found by Jesus.
and John kept on telling people as he swam around the water. There was one man that he went to. He wanted to tell him about Jesus and this man just refused and he said, no, no, I don't want to hear. He didn't want to listen to John. He didn't want to listen to John telling him the good news about Jesus. Well, John took off his life jacket and he gave it to the man and he said, you need this more than I do. John was willing to give up his life. That was his life jacket, but he gave it to the man so that this man could survive, so that this man could have a chance of trusting in Jesus. John was willing to sacrifice his life for others so that others could be saved. You know, that reminds me of the Lord Jesus. Because the Bible tells us that he laid down his life. He sacrificed himself when he died on the cross. He didn't die on the cross because he deserved to. He did it because he loves you. He loves you so much. He wants you to have your sins forgiven. It was all part of God's plan that Jesus would be the sacrifice. He would be the sacrifice and the punishment for sin, for your sin. But Jesus died on the cross that day and three days later Jesus rose again from the dead and he is alive and he is the saviour of the world and he is the only one who can save you now from the punishment and from the power of sin. You are lost and far away from God because of sin but Jesus is looking for you. He wants to save you. He wants to rescue you. He wants to give you eternal life. You know, if you are a Christian, you know that you're saved, you know you belong to Jesus. Jesus wants you to tell others about him. He wants you to share the good news with people who are lost, people who are far away from God. He wants you to tell them about Jesus, how they can have their sins forgiven by him. Well, John began to swim away, but the waves brought him back to the man. And the man said, please come back. I want to hear more about Jesus. I want to hear about Jesus. And John went back to the man and he took the time to explain to him who Jesus was, what Jesus had done for him, how much Jesus loved him, how Jesus wanted to rescue him. And there's that verse in Romans 10 verse 13 in the Bible and it says, call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. And that's what the man did. He called out onto the Lord. He asked the Lord Jesus to forgive him for his sins. He thanked him for dying on the cross for him and he got saved that day. You know, this man had hope. This man now had eternal life. He now belonged to Jesus. You too can belong to Jesus today if you trust in him, if you call on his name and ask him to save you. You too can have this eternal life, this eternal hope you too can be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ today and you will no longer be lost, but you will belong to Jesus. Well, that man's life changed that day and John left him and John began to keep telling people about Jesus. But the water was getting so, so cold and John couldn't even feel his fingers, his toes. He couldn't even swim anymore. He was finding it really hard to breathe. The icy, icy cold water was was giving him hypothermia. John tried to talk as best as he could. He spent his last moments telling people about Jesus. And the very last words John would have spoken was Romans 10 verse 13. Call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. These were his last words. John breathed his last breath and he sank down into the ocean. His body went down into the ocean. But you know what? John was already in heaven. He was already with the Lord Jesus Christ. His body may have been in the water, but his soul was in heaven with his saviour Jesus. That man who had trusted in the Lord Jesus to be his saviour, he was still in the water. He was wearing that life jacket and he was still clinging to that wood. A nearby ship had come to rescue people from the sinking Titanic and the lifeboats were sent out into the water to look for any survivors that were left to rescue them. But there were very few people left. There were only 705 people who were rescued from the sinking Titanic 
And as these lifeboats travelled through the water, there was only six people that they found alive. Everyone else had died. They had lost their lives in the sinking of this ship. This man was found by a lifeboat and he was rescued and he was taken to a big ship where the survivors were brought to and the survivors were brought to New York and the news spread quickly that the Titanic, the greatest ship in the world, this ship that was unsinkable, had actually sunk on its very first journey and the news spread of the great disaster that it was because most people who were on the Titanic that night in the early hours of the 15th of April had lost their lives. In New York, the names of the people that had been saved from the sinking ship were listed. On the other side, there were the names of the people who'd been lost at sea, the people who had lost their lives. I wonder which list you would be on. Are you saved from the punishment of sin? Are you saved? Do you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know that your sins are forgiven? Or are you still lost? Lost and far away from God? You can be saved. You can be saved if you call on the name of the Lord Jesus. You can have your sins forgiven today if you trust in Jesus. Four years later, at a Titanic survivors meeting, the man who had been rescued out of the sea, that same man who had been given the life jacket, that same man who had trusted in Jesus, stood up and he told everyone about John Harper. He told them that he was probably the last person to speak to him, the last person to have heard the good news of Jesus from him. And he was trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Nana survived. She went to New York and then she traveled back to England and she went to live with her aunt and uncle. And Nana lived a full life. Jana couldn't remember much about that night, but she knew that her father was in heaven. She knew that her father was saved, that he belonged to Jesus. Nana grew up and she too got married and she married the pastor of a church. And in 1986, Nana died. She went to heaven to be with Jesus. But not only that, she would see her father, John, once again. They would be reunited together. That was the hope that they had. If you are saved, Jesus can help you to be brave like John. He can help you to be courageous. He can help you tell others about Jesus by the power of his Holy Spirit. He can use you just the same way that he used John Harper. Our good news club fun fact today is life birds we see on top are nine times bigger underwater. Quiz time. Why did John leave Nana on the lifeboat? How many people died when the Titanic sank? How can you be saved from your sin? I'm now going to sing A Million Reasons. Thank you God for saving me. Thank you God for saving me. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. You set my feet on solid ground. You set my feet on solid ground. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Everything I have.
everybody! This year in July, my mum and dad went to a beach at the top of Ireland near Port Rush. This is a picture of it here. As they were walking along, a man rushed up to them and he asked them, Have you seen my dog? I've lost him. He's golden and he's got big floppy ears and he's about this high. They hadn't seen him, but they went to help the man look for the dog. They searched high and low um, in every nook and cranny and eventually my dad spotted him. He was, in a, he was on a cliff. He had fallen off the top of the cliff and he was stuck in between some rocks. They tried to get at him, but they couldn't get at him. He was completely trapped. So they phoned the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard came with their hammers and chisels and they chiseled at the rock and hammered at it until the dog was set free. The owner of the dog was so happy to be reunited with his dog and he was so thankful to the Coast Guard for saving his dog's life. Our verse we learned last week in, our, in the Bible talks about being saved too. I'm going to read it for us um, just to remind us. And it comes from the book of Luke in chapter 19 in verse 10. And it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Let's say it all together. Um, and we're going to say the Bible says in Luke chapter 19 verse 10, just to remind us where it comes from. After three, one, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Okay, great. So this time we're going to say in a little whisper, um, just so you can barely hear us. After three. One, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Okay, great. So last week we learned what it means by lost in this verse. It means to be lost from God because of our sin. The Bible tells us that we're all born lost from God because our sin separates us from him. Sin is anything that we think, say or do that breaks God's laws. God can't be near sin. He hates sin because he's perfect and he can't be near anything that isn't perfect. And it's, this means it separates us from God. And just like the dog in the story, needed to be saved from danger, we need to be saved from a far greater danger, and that danger is the punishment we deserve for our sins. You see, God must punish sin because he is a fair God, and the punishment for sin is being separated from God and lost from him forever and ever and ever. The good news is that God has made a way for our sins to be forgiven so that we don't have to be punished for our sins, even though we deserve that. You see, God sent his only son, Jesus, into the world to, um, to save us from our sins. Jesus lived a perfect life. He never sinned. He wasn't like us. And he died on the cross and he took our punishment for sin instead of us so that if we ask him to forgive us and if we choose to follow him, then, we can, then he, he will forgive us and we can know that we are part of God's family. And the Bible tells us that once... Um, we've become a Christian once we've trusted in the Lord Jesus to forgive us, that no one can snatch us out of God's hands. Let's try and say our verse again, but this time I'm going to cover it up with some pictures and we'll see if we can say it now. After three, one, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. On the Titanic, many people died and others were saved by their lifeboats and lived to tell the story of the sinking ship. The Bible tells us something. It tells us that after our life on this earth, whenever we die, we will live forever and ever, either in God's home in heaven where it's perfect or, or lost forever in a horrible place separated from God called hell. The people who died on the sinking ship that night, who trusted in the Lord Jesus, went to heaven to be with him. They're still with him today and will be there with him forever and ever. But those who weren't trusting in the Lord Jesus, who were going their own way and living in their sin, had a very sad ending that night and they were lost from God forever. They are still lost from God forever today in that awful place called hell and they will always be lost in, in that place. On the Titanic, John knew that many people would die when that ship started sinking. He knew that if they didn't trust in the Lord Jesus there and then, that they would be lost from God forever and ever. That's why he was willing in our story today to give up his life jacket and his own life to tell them that they needed to trust in the Lord Jesus to save them. He told them that Jesus died for them and took the punishment 
for sin instead of them, and if they made a decision to turn away from their sin and trust in Jesus to forgive them and follow God, that then, then they could know that if they died that night, that they would be going to be with God in heaven forever and ever. What a joy to know that. Boys and girls, we don't know what could happen to us tomorrow. We need to be ready and trusting in the Lord Jesus as our Savior. Okay, this time we're going to test our eyesight. So cover your right eye and we're going to try and say our verse all together. After three. One, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Okay, let's try our other eye now. After three. One, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. <sighs> Our verse today says that Jesus came to seek the lost. I wonder, is he speaking to you today for this verse from his word, the Bible? Maybe you haven't trusted in the Lord Jesus to save you yet. You can do this today. If you realize that you're a sinner, tell the Lord Jesus that. Ask him to forgive you and choose to live your life for him, the best life. If you have already done this, then you can know that you are saved and that you have a home in heaven. God says that once you're saved, we need to tell other people what he has done, that he sent his son Jesus, the son of man, to seek and to save them. I wonder if you can think of someone this week you can share this good news with, just like John Harper did on the Titanic. Let's say our verse all together one last time. Give it your all, okay? After three, one, two, three. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Good job. John Harper and his wife were Christians. They loved God and they lived in Scotland. John Harper was a preacher. In Belfast, they were making a ship called RMS Titanic. That was the biggest ship in that time. In Southampton, the ship was being loaded by John Harper and Nana, and he brought his sister aboard with her. <coughs> captain Edward John Smith was the captain. This is Thomas Andrews, the ship designer. Captain Smith got iceberg warnings, but he ignored them to, to go at full speed to break the speed record there. Soon there was an iceberg. They hit the iceberg. There was a hole in Titanic, and it was filling up with water, and it started to sink. Some people tried to pay for the lifeboats, and some people tried climbing in. John Harper and Nana were saying goodbye. John Harper was telling people to forgive their sins and learn about God. People, more people were jumping in the sea. Captain Smith and Thomas Andrews saved also people. Lightboats were going, more people started jumping in as the ship went down. People were running to the back of the ship as the funnels fell. The ship went right up in the air. Some lightboats light boats weren't full. And one of the lifeboats went back for survivors. Most of the people were dead, but they got to rescue some. John Harper gave his life jacket to someone else and he drowned it. We know he went to be with God in heaven. The lifeboats wait, waited to be rescued by Carpathia. What's wrong, Charlie? <laughs> John Harper died. <laughs> yeah, that it was a really sad story. But the good news, boys and girls, is that John Harper is in heaven. And many of the people that he told on the boat are no longer lost, but they were saved. 
because they've trusted in the Lord Jesus and you can do that as well. Thank you for joining our club today and enjoy your trip to America, Charlie. Thank you. I will have to hear all about it whenever you come back. Bye. Bye.